Hella Real taking over for the 2018 and 2020s. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yes. 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 So, Hella Real episode 10, y'all. Hey. We in the double so digits. Now. digits. <laughs> congrats, ladies. Congrats. 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 And we are Hello, Hello Real. Real. So, first of all, Sanaa Lathan's new movie, Napoli Ever After, on Netflix. Can't yes. wait to see it. I heard so much. That, that's the movie where she, like, shaved her, her hair. Cut her hair? Yes. She did what I did. Like, she did. Yes. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. In the beginning, uh, I'll just say the beginning, I won't, won't put out the spoilers, um, but you know, she's just like all only worried about her hair and like she doesn't even open the, like, you know when you open the dishwasher and all the steam comes out, she's like, and then she won't even let her man like touch her hair in bed and just like all this until it gets to the point of, you know, that's what she said, that's what she cuts her hair? No, there's, it's, a, it's a process. Oh, it's a process. Okay, yes. okay. Oh, I'm gonna just watch it. Yes. yes. I have to watch it still too. Yeah. And it's based off a book. Too. I read. I ain't gonna act like I'm gonna watch, uh, read the book before watching. <laughs> it's already out, so yeah, I'm gonna just watch it. Tiara Thomas, that's her name. So, what yeah. made you cut your hair? Um, like what, what, what was it? Was it like um, a trigger? I just needed like, a change, change, and that was something I had done. But you can change everything. your hair, and not shave it. No, but I'm saying I have done pretty much everything with my hair besides <laughs> cut it off. So I was like, it was like a fuck it, it then, moment. Yeah, and I got tired of doing it. So I'm happy to get up in the morning, just put some lotion, oil or whatever, and then brush it and go. Was it liberating? Like Hell just be like liberating. No, like even right now. <laughs> <laughs> no hair in your ear, your earring game. Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. Because yes. I had the pixie cut before, but mine was like. I remember just, the pixie. Yeah, it was like I blonde too. It was mm -hmm. cute. I just graduated college and I was like, I'm not no student no more. And knew me. So the, I, like graduation, did, the night before graduation, nice. I cut it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so I graduation day, I came new Kaylee Z. <laughs> <laughs> and I kept the pixie. I kept it for a while until I got into a relationship. And this, this is my relationship growth. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it looks good. It looks really yeah. healthy. Thank you, thank you. I, I stopped with the blonde. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm ready for another change. I'm about to do something else. She mm -hmm. wants some crazy. Cut it again? Or, yeah, cut it, color it. I'm gonna look hella different. Alright, girl. Well, don't expect me to cut my hair because I have a big ass head. <laughs> but, as we get this show on and popping, right. once the budget comes in, I'm getting hella wigs, yeah. okay? Who are the wig companies? We need sponsors. Okay? I want wigs. I want a whole mm -hmm. shelf behind me. <laughs> so Good morning, you everyone. Name them? Yes, they're gonna have names. <laughs> all my friends. I'm gonna name all you guys. Yeah. Gio, Kayla, Patrice, Emmy Rose, they're all gonna have a name. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like here it. for it. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, old girl is on it. Are everyone's evil stepmom, which is Sanan Lathan's mom on the show. Oh, yeah. What the is the lady name from um, The Line Between Love and Hate? Lynn Whitfield. Mm. Mm -hmm. So, Lynn Whitfield's in this movie. She was on The Breakfast Club. And like they were show. like. Well, they're they're saying that she seems like she was evil in real life, cause cause she's like spicy in her interviews. Like she's sweet, and then she like turns sour real quick. She's a sour patch kid. Yeah, sour patch kid. But I just said you have a DC movie villain laugh. Okay. Yeah, that's all. And he prefers Marvel. Oh really? I do prefer. Marvel. Oh, so you got me in the second class situation. Whoa. Damn. There you go. See what I mean? The exactly. I just ask questions, guys. <laughs> But she actually also made a comment. Oh, she's talking about the Emmys. What'd she say? She thought that, you know how, I didn't see, you saw the Emmys, right? I didn't yeah. actually see yeah, anything. I, I just saw like, actually I didn't even see any clips. I just heard it. But she said she thought that, um, uh, you know, that it was like, they're trying to be really diverse. Like the, all, a lot of the black jokes, she thought it was forced. Oh yeah, it was. Of course it was. And then because all the awards went to white people. people. Yeah. Yeah. That's what she was saying. Like hella nominated people of color. But they made a big ass deal about, uh, what's her name? Jennifer O. Is her name first name Jennifer? She was in Grey's Anatomy back in the day. Oh, the Asian one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. They made a big ass deal about her being the first Asian to be I mean, like nominated for an Emmy, but yet, and still, she didn't fucking win. Yeah. And she brought her mom and everything. 
<laughs> and then Issa Rae was talking about it on Jimmy Kimmel. Mm -hmm. She was like, the first time she was nominated for something, I guess it was the Golden Globe, and her family was happy, through a fucking party I and everything. That, yeah. And then she didn't win. And then, then so then this, the next time they didn't care. Right. Yeah, there were no parties. <laughs> they didn't like, make no cake. And she still didn't win. So it's just it's like just so whack. And y'all know we love Insecure. You catch our wind downs every week. Mm -hmm. Real fans. Y'all know. She that. deserves all the goddamn awards. Yes. Because it's real life. Yeah. There's so many shows that are just unrelatable, and hers is hella relatable. Right. Mm -hmm. it, you know, I, like I was telling y'all earlier, I went to that uh, writer's talk, and it was all women of color, and they're writers, and talking about putting black stories into Hollywood and how the gatekeepers, the white men, um, you know, would say like, your stories are not relatable, but they were like, us people of color have been relating to your yeah, white stories right, for the right, for right, time. 50 years, right, so y'all right, right. can't relate to our stories, we're all fucking humans, mm -hmm. we all have very similar experiences mm -hmm. with the twist of whatever it is, they don't want to, they don't yeah. want to relate. That's but they probably is. can. That's the thing. They can, they but can. they don't want to. Just like we can relate to your white stories with your male gaze. <laughs> we sing your white ass songs and love it. Right. Shit. Tom. <laughs> yeah. Tom. They know about that. I don't know about that, y'all. We'll have to make a playlist. Okay. What are your favorite white Gio's songs? Gio's like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Drop the like, comments. Put our girl on your favorite <laughs> white person song. Yes, yes. <laughs> Zebras out there are the zebras. <laughs> Actually, I get I'm Oreos. Like, ever since no, I don't like that term. Oreos. No. <laughs> That's not a mix. That's like it's just like it's like black. Yeah, yeah. Why you, well, I know some people. Just like, okay. Anyway, <laughs> well, I don't like that term to refer to mixed people. Like whatever, if it's sometimes it's to you, just it true. Okay. I like and ever since <laughs> Trevor Noah, I've been saying zebra, zebra, zebra. I like that one though, zebra. <laughs> Because he was like, oh, we we get to name them because we have them. I'm like, damn, we don't have any zebras. Here we go. <laughs> so we'll go with Sea World. Not Sea World. San Diego, San Diego Zoo. Right, but not any zoo. San Diego Zoo. <laughs> they got them at the San Francisco Zoo. The zebras? Zebras? Zebras, yes. Oh. <laughs> but anyway, so anyway. all my zebras put out your mom's favorite song because we know she's the white one. No. <laughs> Their mom is the. It's our it's our privilege too. It's our that's right. <laughs> it's our black and mixed privilege. It's our mixed to, privilege to push Except that line. Except Tamara, their dad's white. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. Hey, anyway. we have gotten super off track. We should. Sure hey, how do we, we start? Where do we start? We started with talking about Natalie Ever After. Wear your natural hair. Anyway, ladies. I can't wait to watch it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to make the chop, make it, girl. <laughs> And if you want a flat iron, flat iron it goes. Not too much though. Damage. Yes. You gotta use the nuts and berries. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> I use so many different conditioners, y'all. Girl, tell me. I use the masks. I be putting honey. No, I don't put honey, but I'm just saying I would. I would say that's real. Yeah. Like that's real hippie. Well, my mom's a hippie. <laughs> <laughs> she has like homemade concoctions. Alright, it's Hell the Real episode 10. So you know we gotta keep the guests coming. This episode we have Tango Eyes and Martin. So come to the stage. She's an old friend. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. You know, yes. Thanks for having me. You know, you, <laughs> you got long arms. You got long arms. You got long arms. Yes. Tango's an old friend from the neighborhood. You yeah. know, we used to always be kicking it. Well, I used to. But he's speaking on your sister. We'll get to right. We're all grown up now. Yes, we well, are. Already grown back then. <laughs> <laughs> so, you now you're a poet, or you might have been always a poet, I don't know. Well, now, now everybody knows I'm a poet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what was the first poem you ever wrote, and how old were you? I was five years old, and, and uh, this, I, I think it was like a school assignment. They, um, around Langston Hughes, like they they read us a Langston Hughes poem and then they said, now you write a poem. And I wrote the poem and it was exceptional for, <laughs> for, for, for a five year old, you know, and it was like the the buzz of the little school and, and uh, you know. 
Do you need to do it at the assembly? Nah, it was just kind of an underground phenomenon. Okay, you went viral before it was a thing. Right, 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 right. (laughs) And, uh, you know, kids was like, you're going to be a poet when you grow up. And I was like, no. No, No, I will not. Um, So it's kind of, all I have to say, kind of like, it's really one of the, I think, the journeys, um, or especially the journey of a poet, because it's such a weird kind of art. Um, it's kind of like as it moves to your central identity. So, you know, I've been writing poems the whole time, or even my little raps and this type of thing, but, you know, it actually becoming the first thing I say when you ask me, you know, what I do, you know, that, that's what takes time. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I can spell my name at five. <laughs> 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 I didn't know my lowercase letter. <laughs> Now, what was the pivotal moment when you decided, like, okay, poetry is my thing? You know, That's it's the path, I'm it, the path chose me. <laughs> 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 um, you know, it's, it, I think it's like you can get when you have a knack for something, you can actually get pretty uh, far uh, and, and pretty recognized without putting your all into it. So I think it was just like a gradual, um, a gradual journey of me taking the, the craft more and more serious until, uh, you know, it's kind of like one day you wake up and it's almost too easy mm-hmm. or you, the, the response is, is um, you know, it's always well received. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it, it all just came down to, you know, my relationship to, to, to the craft and just doing as right by it as I can. Once I kind of flipped into that mode, you know, so it's, 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 it's hard to say that it was on this day you know, I wasn't struck by a, a light or fell off a, a donkey or anything. Like <laughs> but um, but there is definitely like there's there is kind of a looking back, and you say, okay, I saw uh, what I wasn't doing then, and what I'm doing now. What was the first poem that you were commissioned to write? It wasn't just your creative. Uh, oh, where they started paying me. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, Within the coin. Yes. When I got the coin. I think you know. Actually, the 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 uh, the coin it, it came. You know, like last month. You know, so <laughs> like the, the, the coin is a coin. The coin. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Good. Now it's better than never. You know. <laughs> <laughs> From your own work, what is your um, favorite lines of poetry? I have. The five-year-old poem. <laughs> bars you know but it was about it was it was about losing my father you know um so i was already kind of like too serious a child you know i mean or or was you know processing or you know or or just keeping it hella real from uh, day from day one yeah 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 exactly um i just remember that's what it was about but i don't remember the exact line but you know I have so many cold lines, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> but, you can't let you bar. You got that bar for us. I don't know if you bars. are I'm ready for Poetry the bar. Bars. For, man, are you ready. ready for the <laughs> bar? Yeah, yeah. We are oh, real. Man, <laughs> man, how many bars is, are y'all prepared for? Well, I'll put it like this. This town is coming to town. <laughs> A circus watching itself. Half distracted, half suicidal, thrilled children, dressed as cops. Thrilled children, uh, preaching and policing and intaking and hiring and snatching your money. This town's coming to town with tough trademarks to follow. Today I watched capitalism walk on water and people play dead so that they could be part of a miracle. Did I get you a little yes, bit of yes, the yes, trans yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Be on a higher plane, y'all. Uh, man, could, yeah, I can keep going all day now. Man. Mm-hmm. But that is the last of our questions. Yes. Right on. So thank you for sitting with us. Thank you for us. having me. Anything yeah. oh, else you want to add? You want to plug the book, social yeah. media, something yeah. like that? Yeah. Just, you know, just, just look, look, look for me in a, somewhere near you, you know? <laughs> yeah, just check out the, check out the book. Um, uh, it, 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 if you would like uh, to have my, me and my poems come to you wherever you at. You can, you can email tango poetry uh, at gmail.com. Um, 
Now look, besides that, I mean, if I would just say say anything in conclusion, it's just that I I, I hope that my craft is just kind of like this synthesis of you know the wordplay and the exploration of craft, but also the political commitment. You know, I mean, the poems really are about digesting reality in order to do something with it. You know, so you know wherever you know wherever we getting down, uh, you know, one hundred solidarity. If I was to campaign for anything, it's just you know that we all kind of step up our uh, step up our collective moves. That's why this is so you know beautiful to see. You know this is a together thing. You know, so it's just you know unity is the is the only thing we can do right now. So, okay, so one last question. So we're hella real. <laughs> yeah, we're hella real. <laughs> You're hella fill in the blank. Yeah, I'm hella nervous. <laughs> She had like a husband once a long time ago. He it was, was like real quick though. But he was like, oh, okay. Oh, but yeah, he was like a guy. Oh, he was like a producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he was in the music game somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Nick Cannon was way before that. Oh, even before that? No, I'm asking. I don't know. Girl. <laughs> I don't know the mother. I could barely keep up with who I dated. <laughs> <laughs> I got a with the Kardashians. Right. I've been married for like six years now, so that's all that matters. Do I have kids by? Otherwise, nigga, don't call me. <laughs> so even outside of that he also posted a picture of Jay-Z and Beyonce in a car and she was wearing some 
some shoes that they say were Yeezys and he put in the caption family. Now people are saying that was not his shoes. It was some That's other I, like, I that. brand. Another However, brand. that other brand is like $24 shoes. You believe she's gonna be wearing $24 shoes? She's Beyonce. She can wear whatever. Right. She, she I mean, yeah, she's, she's Beyonce. And so she I feel has. like if she likes it, she'll pay ten. And if Beyonce $10 likes twenty-four dollars shoes, the best believe they're gonna be sold out tomorrow. Right. <laughs> Back ordered for ten years. <laughs> ten years. <laughs> Not ten years. <laughs> like like, a, like well. an Hermes bag yeah. on a wait list. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You might as well have wrote mom and dad. <laughs> Like, I'm not like, oh my god, mom and dad. It's but just when you see the comments in underneath the picture that says, mom. It's like, dad. I, I think the mom is saying the same, like, how I, like, I think, I don't think there's, come on. You think people are that crazy? It's not. Yes. It's just weird. Just weird. Beyonce weird. hands are. I just see it as weird. But yeah, speaking of, um, yeah, the beehive. Yeah. Let's talk about the, the beehive. How do you guys? Yes, oh, somebody. because somebody said something crazy. Yeah, someone posted on Twitter that she basically doesn't have a legendary song. Single ladies? Yeah, or question her having what? a legendary song. That's like, like, I thought of that instantly. Like, what the fuck? Right. Like, if you go to any wedding mm -hmm. <laughs> and someone's about to throw out the bouquet, the bouquet. Mm -hmm. it's only one motherfucking song that's gonna play. All the single ladies. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. She has, I mean, aside from single ladies, like, she's crazy in love. Mm -hmm. We've heard so many yeah. different renditions of it too. Mm -hmm. uh, what else is legendary? If I was a boy, Halo. Oh, yeah. Halo. That's Halo's a good one. Really good one. If I was a boy, like one of my favorite Beyonce mm -hmm. songs. Mm -hmm. I think people just hate on her because of the beehive. Yeah. Like, like you might be like, oh yeah, I like Beyonce, but they were like, but do you call her mom though? <laughs> <laughs> Like they go too hard, and yeah. it's like, it turns people off from them. Yeah. Ain't no goddamn comments gonna turn me off from Beyonce. She, <laughs> she the motherfucking queen. <laughs> she, 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 ain't no, no goddamn Yeah, like, I, don't, I don't, I don't care about the. I, I get it on both sides. I get the, I get the slander, but it's like you said, like, yeah, Beehive, but some people right, like, like. I think some people don't like be like being like told something like oh Beyonce is a shit you know and then oh, yeah, like, 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 oh, well, one of us have not. like a negative opinion as fans it's like oh shit should I say this because, you right. know what I mean we have to like, take down be, our whole social media one, like, for saying something. art is subjective you can have your own opinion everybody right. has different opinions so to just like really just jump down somebody's throat by saying like one little statement of like, yeah, and oh, like, like if you're a real fan or, too if you're a real good fan like yeah. you should you should be critical be yeah, yeah. Be critical. yeah right of your favorite artist it's all feedback mm -hmm. and i'm but sure she takes that and improves and mm -hmm. adds it to her future shows and all sorts of shit enslave so. our entire life snatch right. our edges <laughs> <laughs> shit girl i ain't already got no head, head. <laughs> but shit when i go to the concert <laughs> all this shit gonna be gone <laughs> Another visual album. Like, I just, yes. Can I get one? That you know what? That's what I really like about the Carters is that it. I feel like it's music for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's music for someone who's actually been in a relationship. Mm -hmm. Like this shit. Times get hard, but still, I love my man. Like you know. So it's like we work. It might have been a hard oh. summer, but nigga, it's the fall. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So Beyonce and Beyonce. We got haters. It's just it's the internet and all. I think in the internet, just media, not even social media, just media in general, gives people a platform to be haters. Yes. Right? For example, Cat Williams. Oh my God. Dude. So we first time saying on Tiffany Haddish, and we saw she took that in stride. However, he also had something to say about Leslie Jones. Leslie Jones. And so did Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart and Gerard. Carmichael and yeah. Lil Rel and Hannibal Burst. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's got a lot of shit about people. But yeah. I'm saying um, 
Kevin Hart also has something to say about Leslie Jones. Oh, he. Oh, Kevin yeah. Hart has something to say. He okay, said yeah. that he put her on and this and that. Wait, that Kevin Cat, Hart said this? Yes. That Cat Williams put her on. Oh, you're right. He said Cat oh, okay. Williams put yeah. her oh, okay, on. Okay. Mm -hmm. But Leslie Jones was like, both y'all niggas need to keep my name out your mouth unless you okay. eat my pussy. And why do you <laughs> feel? I feel like male comedians, or just in general, like in the media or entertainment industry, they always have to call out, like, I put her on. And so? Yeah. Right. It's like, who cares? Like, she's doing a great job now. She's on the come up. Like, just be happy for her. Yeah. Because there's definitely, I mean, not to be that person, but there's a few people that I put on in the sports media game that I gave them their internships, and now they're doing, they're getting more jobs than I am because they're white guys, but... Ooh, Still spicy. Yes. Yeah. Spicy. Spicy. So I know I can understand how you feel some type of way if the person that, that you put better. on is doing better than you. Mm -hmm. But, but you to yourself. Don't be a hater. Don't be, yeah, that, don't don't be bring a it hater. to the breakfast yeah. club. Yeah. Only talk about it on your own show. <laughs> Wait, I feel like I'm so behind. All. Yeah, I'm like so behind on this. Okay, so what did Kev what did Kevin Hart say about Leslie Jones? He that's he just said I put her I was the one that put her on. No, he said Cat Williams was the one who put her on. So I guess he should be able to say whatever he wants. Mm -hmm. So how oh. does that tie into? Yeah, I'm confused. Like, okay, how does that tie into? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How does that have anything to do with Tiffany Haddish? Why did he throw her name in? That's, That's where I'm just see. so well, confused. Well, what I heard on the Breakfast Club is they were on together. I know, like, well, they're promoting their movie, mm -hmm. so they were on together. Mm -hmm. But like, and he, well, he was talking about what Kevin. Cat Williams said about all these people, mm -hmm. and then he said he was really angry because he knows Tiffany. He knows that she knows that she's been she deserves where she's at. Blah, 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 blah. That's what that's where I that's what I heard. I never heard him say anything about Leslie Jones. Yeah. So I'm confused. Let's okay, see. so this is what. Happened. Okay, so Kevin Hart said this on the Breakfast Club. Okay, he said so when you say Tiffany had he's talking about Cat Williams. He said so when you say Tef Tiffany Haddish doesn't deserve it. Or it really isn't a comedian, and those other women have worked hard, which they have. He said, shout out to Melanie Cam Camaracho, Lunell, shout out to Leslie Jones, who are all underneath the umbrella of Cat Williams. Cat Williams, have you ever used your platform to fucking bring the br people that were under you up? You haven't. Oh. It's like he, okay, 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 okay. It's like he's dry bragging. Mm -hmm. But because he's trying to defend these women. But he is dry bragging. Yeah. And he's saying like I brought Tiffany Haddish up and you didn't bring uh, these other He did women. he did like make a little like side note. He was like, you know what, I've always been humble, I ain't humble right now. He did I did hear him say that. I, I have I have sat back. Hmm? I have forever been the humble guy. Hmm? I have time to not be humble today. And then he said all this stuff. Okay. And then <laughs> Leslie Jones went on to say that the only people that Kevin Hart brings up women that are women are people that let him fuck. See? So, as, all news to me, this is spicy. And, okay, and didn't okay. Cat Williams also allude to, to Tiffany Haddish sleeping with like white men or something like that? Like okay. she's sleeping with men to come up. And I hate when men do that. Like do not bring what the fuck got to do with this? It has nothing yeah. to do with it. Well no, he said she married she married a white man. Like her ex husband's white, which is not true. He's not. He's black. Yeah. Who? Tiffany Haddish. Yeah. I didn't know she was married. What, what was her final thought? <laughs> her last thought. <laughs> so but like you said, just like who I I don't know. It's like you can if you do fuck your way to the top, people are gonna talk about you. Mm -hmm. But speaking to me, I don't know if Tiffany Haddish did that. Do you think that's true? I I don't think. So. I I don't know. And we don't know. No, I don't, we don't I really know her. I'm just not, saying if I, I was homeless. And I could suck a dick to get unhomeless. I'm gonna suck that dick. <laughs> Sorry, but I mean, I'm not trying to say she did, but yeah, I, I can understand at least. Mm -hmm. I could absolutely understand when times get tough. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It still bothers me though when the guys start bringing up women's pussy. Of course, like, yeah, of course. It's so whack. <laughs> Lame as fuck. <laughs> that doesn't mean he's not trash. Yeah. Yeah, it's trash. Even if it is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why would you bring that up? Yeah, and as on the guy's perspective, you can't be using sex to as power, right? Because that's how Harvey Weinstein ended up getting in trouble, right? It can't be this tit for tat, like, oh yeah, I'll put you on, I'll put you on my tour, I'll put you in my movies, I'll shout you out on, on social media, but 
you gonna have to get this you know so that's you know i'm sure that happens still happens oh, yeah. it's happened to me lame, but yeah. yeah it's lame but it's like men y'all need to do better and women don't take advantage of that right yeah know your worth yes <laughs> So we got hella off topic, and I'm sure we've run over <laughs> our time because yeah, we over. like to keep it at least 30 minutes. <laughs> but thanks for staying with us this far. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> and a big thank you to Tongo, Tongo. Martin, for coming thank out. Thank you for coming out. Shout out to Berto Heights in San Francisco, the block, <laughs> you know. We, we all grown up now, and we're all doing positive things. So keep that going. Let's all keep the positivity going. Um, I'm Kayla Jo. I'm Gio. And I'm Katrina. And this is Hello Real. Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs>